Garden Country Church. Good morning. Y'all glad to be in God's house? Amen. Yeah. Well, we're gonna st- we want to thank everybody for being here and for those that are watching online. And at this time, we want to go to the Lord in prayer so we can start this service. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for this day, Lord. And, and Lord, uh, uh, you are just such an almighty God, Lord. And, and there's so much that you do for us that we're not even aware of, Lord. And, and Lord, we just come to you this morning and we just ask prayers over, over our uh, praise and worship, Lord. And, and lay your hands upon our pastors. He delivers your word. And uh, Lord, again, all the prayer requests that's gone out, Lord, we just ask you to lay your hands upon each one of them because we know that you know what every one of them is, Lord. And, and Lord, again, thank you for this morning. And I just ask all these things in your most precious and holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He never chose me. It's always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong. At the end of the line With all the other not quite With all the other get it right But it turns out you're the one We were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul And ever since you rescued me you gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus When Moses had stage fright And David right to a sword fight You picked twelve outsiders Nobody would have chosen And you changed the world Well the moral of the story is Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear that devil start talking to me Saying who do you think you are I say, I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to see I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down in history As another blood-bought faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name Well, that's fine with me I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus So let me go down, down, down in history As another blood, blood, faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name, well it's fine with me I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to see I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus. Ooh, what a way to start the day. We have an awesome praise and worship team. One thing about it, ain't, can't nobody compete with us. Good morning, Rockin' Country Church. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful to be in God's house this morning? Before I get started, I have some business to take care of. Uh-oh, I didn't do it. <laughs> it. Usually Pastor Woody is the one that does it. You know, here at Rockin' Country Church, you know, we all know 
our pastor's wife. And we all know that this month is Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month. Did you know that? I didn't until I read it on Facebook. <laughs> but I know it now. But you know, we all know Miss Terry. But those of you online, you don't. So you're going to get a chance to meet her. Miss Terry, would you please come up here just so they can see you online? <laughs> and to give you this. This is so unexpected. Thank you so much. Um, I, let me just say something. Um, you, I wish I could give you guys all flowers because you guys do more for me than I feel like I do for you. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank we you love so you. Much. We love you too. Like I say, we all know her. And she can drive all of us as crazy as she wants to. But see, online, you don't get the opportunity. So we love Miss Terry. Yes, <laughs> she's, she's always got a smile. She's always very sweet. She always has a loving word. I don't think I can really think of anything negative. I used to make fun of her for talking all the time. But she's even gotten where she don't talk all the time, you know? I don't, I don't know. We just, <laughs> we just have an awesome pastor's, you know, you meet some pastor's wives and, and they are always so pleasant, but we have an awesome pastor's wife. So I just think we're so fortunate. So now I've done, I've done my business. You know, here, uh, if do we have any first-time visitors today? We do, yes. I see a couple of hands back here. Oh, and back over here, too. Boy, y'all need roller skates. The bag is just a little something put together. Keep your hand up for me so they'll know where you're at. There you go. It's just a little something put together by the women's ministry. The main thing, there is a visitor's card and an ink pen in there. I wish you would fill out that visitor's card and drop it in the black mailbox just so we'll know that you were here and it was a blessing having you. Uh, if you've been coming to Rockin' Country Church and you'd like to make it your home church, we would also love to have you do that. Amen. And so there is a form on the back table. You can fill it out, drop it in the black mailbox, and Pastor Woody will get in touch with you. We have Bible study basically three days a week here at Rockin' Country Church. On Tuesday mornings, we're in the book of Proverbs. We're almost through with it. I think we've been in there for six months. <laughs> but it's been an awesome book to study, and Miss Barbara has done, gone in and done great detail on it. And, you know, the more you learn, the more you want to know. So I'm looking forward to, I think we're going into Psalms next. So... Uh, it's, it's just a wonderful book to learn. Pastor Woody is in the book on Wednesday nights at... We're in the book of Hebrews, and it is an awesome book. And I think we went through... We went through quite a few verses Wednesday night. But, you know, I always leave, and I know I've learned something new after every Bible study. So if you want to learn what God had in mind when he wrote the book. The best way to do it is Bible study. Amen. You know, we can learn a lot on Sundays through his teachings, but we really learn a whole lot yeah. at Bible study. Amen. So, and we then we have our RCC TV on YouTube. So you can go in there. Uh, what book are you in, Pastor? Philippians. 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 Yeah, so you, you can go in on RCC TV if you can't make it to Bible study. But really, it, it's good to go to RCC TV and read that. But it's just so much better to get it in person. Amen. So today, after our morning service, we'll have our prayer vigil. We are a praying church. We believe in the power of prayer. Every one of us can test, do a testimony of how God has answered a prayer. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just wonderful that we have such an all, 
that we serve such a mighty God. You know, whew. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry. Uh, April the 4th, we have our sunrise service at 630. I forgot to put it in the bulletin again. So uh, it's, is it, it's at 645, but if we get here at 630, we can get our chairs out there and be ready at 645 when the sun starts coming up so you can give all, all the praise and glory to the self-risen Lord. Uh, we also have our fellowship luncheon that day, so we would love to have you come worship with us and fellowship and leave with a full, full heart and a full belly. Amen. Uh, April the 11th is our monthly team leader meeting. Uh, it's an open meeting, and it's uh, it's good to come and stay for a meeting because you learn so much what's going on, not just in our our church, but God's big church. So uh, it, it's we need to grow God's church. And a lot of times the team leader meeting is the best way to, to get that word out. Uh, we do not pass a hat, boot, or plate here at Rockin' Country Church, but as the Lord leads you to give, we ask that you drop it in the black mailbox in a tithing envelope. And... We'll take care of it. On the very back, as I said, we are a praying church. I have a couple of extra ones. I have Ann Berry. She's a lady I met when we went to Florida all the time, and she's suffering from cancer, and she's really having a rough go of it. So I would like for you to pick, pick her up and give an extra prayer for her. And then the Rankin family, I don't know if y'all know them or not, but they lost... Uh, their son over the weekend so we want to lift them up and of course we have Miss Judy Watts lost her brother so we want to lift her up also if you'll lay your hands and remove your hats gentlemen and lay your hands on our prayer request because we know that God answers our prayers may, may not be the way we want them answered you know but he answers them the way his will is. So that's what we ask for. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we just give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you for your loving mercy and grace, Father, and we thank you that you're such a faithful Father that we know that we can turn to you for anything. I ask that you take your loving arms and wrap them around each and every person that is in need of, of help, Father. You know each and every need whether it be health, spiritual, financial, you know what each person needs. Father, I just thank you so much for loving me. Every day when I fall short, I know I can turn to you at night and you're still there waiting on me because I fall short daily, Father. I ask that you lift up the homeless, the hungry, our first responders, our military, Everyone in uniform, Father, we want them to go home safe at the end of each day. I pray for the DF, DPS trooper that was shot over the weekend. I, I, pray, I pray for him, Father, that he gets through all this. I pray all these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 I needed another hug. <laughs>
tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen Just memories. 
awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe display then strains my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great When Christ shall come With shouts of acclamation And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great He's 
Tell the story of God's redemption plan. How Jesus died to take our sins away. But my finest words cannot express. What one old rugged tree said best For nail to it was all God had to say The cross said it all The cross said it all heart was heard for the cross and it all to prove his love like nothing else could God used three nails and two pieces of wood and the cross said could write it in the heavens he could spell it in the stars and he could paint it across the sky for all to see 
But with his own blood, Jesus Christ wrote, I love you with his life and forgiveness still resounds from Calvary. The cross said it all. The cross said it all. Without a word, God's heart was heard for the cross. three nails and two pieces of wood and the cross said it all more a symbol of suffering or a picture quite it, but that's good. Close enough there, Brother George. If you don't mind, I'm going to grab that book right there, and I'm going to pray over that book, okay? All right? It's, it's all good. Well, good morning, Rockin' Country Church. I tell you what, it pleases my heart to see everybody here today. We've uh, we worried about this COVID. Hey, how you doing, brother? Sisters, good to see y'all. I mean, it... We've worried about this COVID thing going on and on and on and on and on. But you know what? God's got it. We ain't never going to stop. We're going to keep rolling forward. We're going to keep glorifying Him. We're going to keep worshiping and praising Him. And He's going to take care of us like He promises He will, right? Amen. Amen. So let's lift up this book and we'll get started uh, with our teaching here in just a little bit. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for each and every day. Father, we lift this book up to you. This book is a book of names, Lord. It's not a book of prayers. It's a book of names of people who need you in their lives. So, Father, we ask that you touch each and every person who has entered into this book. Help them, Lord. Assist them, Lord. Counsel them, Lord. Encourage them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Whatever it happens to be. Bless them, Lord, beyond their wildest dreams. So that they will know the love that you have for each and every one of them. Father, bless our service today. Give me the words that you have given me this morning. Let me say it with clarity 
and understanding so that it will resonate in the hearts, minds, souls, and spirits of those who hear your glorious word today. Father, we lift up each and every one of the churches in our community and all of your church throughout the world. We ask them, Lord, that they return to you more so each and every day, glorifying you and honoring you and worshiping you. Father, I ask you bless our offerings that, we, that are given today in this church and in other churches. That you may pour out your abundance of blessings on all of those who give from their heart. Father, I lift up our country. I lift up our administrations, our president, our vice president, Congress and Senate. Our governing bodies that govern this country. And I ask you, Lord, touch their hearts and minds and souls so that they may glorify you with their service. They're supposed to be here to serve the people, not to be served by the people. Father, I thank you that you are with us everywhere we go each and every day. Glorify your name today in our hearts with your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you all. Glad you are here today. <clears throat> if you, uh, and those of you who are online, if uh, you have a prayer and you want to be put into our prayer book, just send in your name and your address to me here at the church on the screen. If you'll be viewing at home on your screen, it'll have address. Send that here, and I will send you one of our decals that says uh, Rock and Country Church is praying for me, and I don't care whether you're, where you're at throughout the entire world. If you will send me a correct address, I will mail you one. I've mailed them to England. I've mailed them to Australia. I'll mail them to you wherever you're at so that you know that this church here in Kemp, Texas is praying for you. I've got a couple of things that I want to talk about real quick, uh, kind of like announcements that uh, I need to just make clear because it's, it's something that I have not shared, I guess you'd say, with, uh, with uh, our announcer. And uh, so uh, we're going to be gone. Terry and I, as most of you know, we're going to be gone. Uh, we're leaving Easter Sunday, and we'll be back right after that. But we won't be, able here, be here for the next service that next Sunday. And uh, that is our business meeting. So we're going to move our business meeting from that Sunday to the next Sunday, which will be the 18th, okay? Which I didn't tell you, so it's my bad. Um, did you all recognize a theme with today's worship music? God is good. God is good. And see, that's what our church is all about. I don't want to be up here telling you how bad you are. You already know that. Or you should know that. If you don't, know, you're living in a fog. But I want to tell you how great God is. How great he was, how great he is, and how great he will always be. And that's the message of our church. It's not how bad we are, because we know that. But how great God is. And he is a great 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 God I would also like to bring up uh, the fact that Patricia Baldwin uh, who goes to our church she lost her mom a couple of days ago so we need to keep her in your prayers uh, Terry has already sent her a card from the church and uh, but anyway she uh, she lost her mom after about a 10 day extensive battle according to what she told me uh, of just pure pain and misery and so now her pain is gone. She's uh, at home with Jesus, and so we celebrate that homecoming. All right, one last final announcement, and then we'll, get, we'll dismiss our children. We'll pray for our children, and we'll dismiss our children, and we'll get started with our teaching today. And that is, uh, as you, uh, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, we talked about elders of the church. Uh, I'm an elder of the church. Brother Jack, Brother Jack has, uh, uh, is filling in as an interim elder. But we need to do nominations, elections of elders. Since we're fixing to leave, and I don't want to do it during the Easter message, because it's not about us doing business, it's about God, all right? Uh, whenever we get back, that Sunday that we get back, we will start taking nominations. So my message to you today is, 
is start thinking about who you would like to nominate as an elder of the church. Here's how it simply works. Jack and I are elders of the church. Uh, our best interest is the best interest of the church. It's not of individuals, it's of the church. So what we have to do is, is that you nominate somebody, that person has the right and privilege without question to say, I accept the nominations or I decline the nomination. It is up to that person. If they decline, that's it. It's done. It's over. There's no other discussion. If they accept, then their name will be, a, will be tabulated. And then the following Sunday, we will announce the nominees. We will cho you will choose who you want to elect. And then this is the way it has to be. And then Jack and I will decide whether or not that person is qualified. According to scripture in 1 Timothy. All right? So we have to do it that way because a lot of times people vote people in because they like them. They're friends. That's my buddy. You know, that's my pal. That's not the best interest of the church. Okay? The best interest of the church is what is good for the church. So that's why as elders, Jack and I have the final say on it. If you would like to be an elder, consider that. The job is extremely simple. I'm going to explain it to you real easily. You help me decide what's best for the church. That's it. That's it. That's all you do. You don't answer people's questions. You don't, you don't take care of people's problems. You help me decide what is best for the church. That's it. Okay? That's why always you should have the best interest of the church as a whole in your in your forefront of your mind all right so that's what it's about so we will do that when we get back we will start that process to get elders of our church everybody okay with that i hope so all right it's pretty simple now let's go ahead and pray up our, our uh, children's church today we'll dismiss them and then we will get started with palm sunday Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come into your house and worship you and praise you and glorify you with our presence. We know that you are with us each and every step of our lives. Father, I ask you to touch the hearts, minds, souls, and spirits of our children today. Let them receive the message that you have for them. It's a little hard for them sometimes to understand, let's say, the adult message. So Miss Terry is so awesome, and Miss Jenny and Miss Ricky are so awesome at bringing it down to their level so that they can understand how much Jesus loves them. For the Bible tells me so. So Father, be with them today. Be with me today, Lord, to bring forth the word as you have, uh, as you have want it brought so that you may be glorified, you may be honored. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's dismiss the kiddos. It's great having chick chickens. It's nice having them chickens. Yeah, it is. All right. We're going to be, if you want to find a couple of the passages, and we're going to have several passages, of course, because that's the way we do. We teach out our scriptures. We're going to be in, uh, at one point, we're going to be in chapter 19 of Luke. We're going to be in chapter 12 of uh, John, which we're going to be there first. Uh, then we're going to look at a couple of other scriptures as well. But that will be our, our, really our main two scriptures. So if you go ahead and find John chapter 12, and then Luke 19. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Palm Sunday. Now, it's going to seem kind of strange because we're actually going to start at the end and work our way back to the beginning. And then that will bring us back to the, to the end. What? I love doing that. I love saying those kind of things and then people going, well, then I guess I better pay attention so I can keep up with it, right? 
because I really want you to keep up with it. I really want you to pay attention because this is very, very, very important. Palm Sunday is a day to celebrate. And we're going to see why we celebrate it in chapter 12. Next Sunday, we're going to celebrate Resurrection Day. You may call it Easter. But today, let's start with the three days before Resurrection Day. And we call it Good Friday. Why do we call it Good Friday? We're not going to be here that Friday night or that Friday. So I want to talk about it today because I don't want to take anything away from Resurrection Day. Why do we call it good? Three men that day were carried to the cross and nailed to a cross and crucified. What's good about that? Now, two of these men who were carried to the cross, unbeknownst to us, we don't know the circumstances, but most likely deserved the penalty of death. But there was a third man that was nailed to that cross that was the innocent lamb. He had no sin whatsoever. There was no reason for him to be crucified to die except that it was God's plan for him to die. It was God's plan for him to be sacrificed. He had not done anything wrong he had led a sinless life. He was good to all those who came to him. He never rejected anyone at any point in time. He healed many, many people. He blessed people beyond their wildest dreams. So what is good about nailing a man to the cross? It was part of God's plan. He was unjustly murdered. But the real strange part about it is, is that he volunteered to be murdered. He never spoke in his own defense. He never tried to escape. And he willingly accepted all the horrors of the sadistic minds of the time. So we look at Good Friday as the day our Savior died for us. We who believe are spared God's punishment and receive his loving grace. What is God's grace? Grace, G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. We recognize Palm Sunday and just as it was written in the writings, it tells us it is a day to celebrate, that day that salvation was seen coming to us, meek and mild, an innocent lamb being led to the slaughter on our behalf. In John 12, starting at verse 12, John 12, verse 12. The next day a, a great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches. Palm Sunday. They took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is a Hebrew term or a Hebrew word which means give salvation now. Give us salvation now. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it was written. That is in Zechariah 9, 9. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's coat. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. 
Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd was with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. Many people went out to meet him because he had performed a sign. He had performed a miracle. He raised a man from the dead. See, this is getting us nowhere. This is what the Pharisees were saying. This is getting us nowhere. The whole world has gone after him. If you knew that there was a man that could raise you from the dead, if you were sick and dying... Would you not go after him? Sure you would. That is the message that we try to bring to the world. Jesus saves. Jesus regenerates. Jesus resurrects the dead. Not only the physical dead, but also the spiritual dead. The spiritual dead, which at one time all of us were. All of us were. You were not born a Christian. You were not born a believer. You were not born a child of God. Scripture tells us clearly you were born as an enemy of God. But Jesus saves. Jesus saves. We recognize Palm Sunday as just A day to celebrate the coming of our Savior, the coming of our Lord. And he did. He came on our behalf to sacrifice himself once for all so that all may come to him. In verse 20, it says, Now, there were some Greeks, the Greeks in reference here is Gentiles. You're either a Jew or a Gentile. That means you're either a child of God, a child of the uh, chosen family of God, the Jews, or you were not. It's just that simple. It's nothing special. It doesn't mean that they were from Greece. It just simply means that they were not of the family of God or of Jews. This is when the Jews, we just read the Pharisees looked and said, Look, the whole world has gone after him. What in the world are we going to do? This is where the Jews are denying Christ. And as soon as the Jews start denying Christ, guess who gets to come in? You and I. The Greeks, the Gentiles, came. They were at the festival. They came to Philip and requested, Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. And Jesus replied, verse 23, The hour has come. The hour has come. The hour is upon me. The hour is here for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Father, save me from this hour. No, he says. No. It is for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify yourself. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. This is the third time. Bob. 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 This is the third time that heaven, the third time that the Father, 
the third time that God himself spoke to the world since Jesus is coming. The third time, the only three times God ever spoke to the world in his own audible voice, much like Bob's. I love you, brother. In his own audible voice so that everyone could hear it. Just like Bob's. God spoke to the world. And he says, I will glorify myself. And I am glorifying myself. And he's glorifying himself through his son. Through his son, Jesus. Now he spoke three, two other times, three times total to the earth since Jesus came. He spoke at Jesus' baptized. Baptism. He said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. In whom I am well pleased. God living in the man Jesus. The second time that he spoke from the, from the heaven and spoke to the world was during the transfiguration. When Moses and Elijah were there on transfiguration. And he said, listen to my son. Listen to him for what he has to say. God only spoke three times. The rest of the time he spoke through Jesus, his son. He still speaks through Jesus, his son today, through his word. Listen. Listen. To the word of God. Though Christ voluntarily came to Jerusalem to die. He was a man. And as the son of God. Knew the pain and the suffering his beloved creation, us, would suffer from time to time and possibly for eternity. Three times, also three times in Scripture, Jesus wept. Three times he wept. In John 12 and 27, John 12 and 27, he says, Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this very reason I came to this hour. It is for this very reason I came to this hour. Jesus' soul was troubled. Let's go to Luke 22. You already have 19 marks, so just a couple of pages over. Luke 22. In verse 44. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he is praying, Father. If you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. And in verse 44, he says, In being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Jesus was stressed to the point to where his actual sweat was bleeding out of his pores. In Matthew and Mark, he tells his disciples, My soul is to the anguish of death. My soul is in such torment and anguish. It feels as though I'm about to die from the pain that I'm suffering within. But he had to experience this true hell. 
My, my heart goes out to Christ knowing that he's sitting there in the garden about to, he is in such pain and such agony in his very spirit and his very soul that he feels as though he cannot take another breath, that he's literally going to die that very, very moment. Was he worried about the pain and suffering he was going to suffer from mankind? Nailing him to the cross, beating him, speeding on him, slapping him, refusing to be with him, his disciples deserting him? No. He was stressed because he knew he had to come and become your sin and my sin. And this Father, God, could not look upon sin, so God would turn his back on his son for three hours. I know somewhat what it's like to have people turn their back on you. And I'm sure many of you do as well. But to know God in an intimate relationship as Jesus did his one and only begotten son and to turn his back on his son was almost more than the man Jesus could bear. But he had to experience this. He had to go through it. Because the, the separation from God is the eternal hell a non-believer will face. And it will be a torment like none other. And Jesus had to experience so that he could tell you and I, I know what it's like to go into the literal hell. And you don't want to go there. So I am going to die, Jesus, of course. I am going to die to provide a way for you to never, ever, ever have to suffer that torment. But the way that I have to do it is to be nailed to a cross. And they nailed our Savior to the cross. And He willingly died for you and I. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus wept because He knew the suffering of that many would go through when they refused to accept Him as their Savior. He wept. The second time that Jesus wept was when Lazarus got sick. Let's go back to John 11. Go to John 11. We see the story of Lazarus, and you know the story. I'm going to just briefly go through it real quickly. Uh, it's the story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters. These, I believe, were childhood friends of Christ, of Jesus, as he was growing up. Lazarus was a dear, dear friend. He it was his bud. It was his, his right-hand guy. It was his friend. And Jesus loved Lazarus, and he loved Mary and Martha. Lazarus was sick. This is in chapter 11, starting at verse 1, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. If you drop down to verse 4, it says, This sickness, now watch this, this sickness will not end. This sickness will not end. Underline end, E-N-D. This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory and so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Verse 11. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. 
His disciples replied, Lord, if he's asleep, let him sleep. He'll get better. Well, rest will make you better whenever you're sick, right? You know, you get sick, go home, drink fluids, take rest, right? That's what it says. Well, they were thinking along the same lines. Jesus had to correct them. He said, look at this. Verse 14. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Well, wait a minute. Didn't you say it wouldn't end in death? Exactly. It would not end in death. But Lazarus died. And for you, for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. Let us go to him. Now, why did Jesus say, for your sake, it's a good thing I wasn't there? Because we know that Jesus, whenever Martha, Mary and Martha sent the uh, word to Jesus, it says, hey, you know, he's, die he's sick, he's dying, he's, he's dead. And Jesus says, well, let's wait two more days to make sure he's really dead. Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Jesus said it will not end in death. He said it's for your sake. Why? Because he loves Lazarus so much, he would have never let him die. He would have never have let him die. See, he loves you so much that if any way he can do it, he gave you free will. But if there's any way he could do it, he will not let you die. But see, you have to make the choice. It's the choice is up to you. Jesus has provided all that is necessary for you to live for eternity. But you have to make a choice too. Why? Because in the beginning, God gave you free will. You can make the decision to live or to die. The true death is to be separated from God forever. The same suffering that Christ went through that brought him to the point of anguish that he thought his very soul was going to die. You don't have to face that. Drop down to verse 23. Martha had come to Jesus. He said, Jesus, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give him, will give you whatever you ask. In other words, Martha was saying, I know God is on your side. And he will give you whatever you ask. So in some way she was saying, will you please bring back my brother? I've lost my loved one. Jesus replied to her and he said, your brother will rise again. She says, oh, I know, I know, I know. At the resurrection, the last day, my, I know he'll rise again on the, on the last day. Jesus says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Each and every one of us at some point in time, unless he comes back, are going to die. But the promise is, is that he is the resurrection and the life. And if we are partaking in him, as our Savior, we will be resurrected and live. <coughs> we will be resurrected and live. It's not a matter that we might or on the last day. No, if you read over in Thessalon uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, you, uh, the book of Revelation, you will see that. Jesus comes back and takes his church. Well, who is his church? We are. Even our brothers and sisters who are dead. 1 Thessalonians 4 tells us, those who are dead in Christ will rise, be resurrected out of the grave. And we who are still walking this earth will be caught up with them. 
in the clouds to meet Jesus when he calls his church home. Just his church now. In other words, if you're not a part of his church. Oh, well, I'm in a church, but I guess I need to sign up my membership to the church, right? No, no, no. That's a membership to a congregation. But you do need to sign up your membership to the church. And that is done by receiving Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. That's when your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's when you are promised eternity. Whether you go to this particular building or whether you go to another building. The church lives within you. And Jesus lives in the church. But if the church is not in you, you don't have Jesus. Oh, well, I think I might. Well, you better think again. Because there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Christ. That's through Christ. There's not another way. You can't get in. You can't sneak in. You can't buy your way in. You can't con your way in. God knows your heart. And you're either in or you're not. And the only way in is through Christ. John 14, 6. We must realize Jesus is the way and the only way. Verse 32. John 11, verse 32. When Mary, this is Martha's sister, Lazarus' sister, Mary, reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. See, she didn't hear the conversation that Jesus had with Martha. She wasn't there, but now she is. So she is in his presence. When Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews who had come along, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled trouble just like he was in the garden of Gethsemane where have you laid him he asked come and see Lord they replied and Jesus wept and Jesus wept now why did Jesus weep this time not only did he see the hurt and I want you to understand this he saw the hurt in Mary's heart at the death of of her loved one. When we have a loved one who dies and they are not in Christ, there's only two places that we go. If we go to heaven, then we have Christ. If we do not have Christ, as I've already explained, we don't go to heaven. You do not go to heaven. There is no second chance after death. So when Jesus saw the agony of death that sin causes, because there's no resurrection at this time. Jesus is the resurrection, but he doesn't raise the people from the grave until afterward. When he saw the hurt and the pain and the agony in her at the death of her brother, his heart went out to her. When he saw the results, the wages of sin, his heart went out to her. And he wept because of her sorrow. When you lose someone, Jesus weeps. Jesus weeps when you weep. And Jesus knows and has actually captured every tear you have ever cried. If you go back over in the book of Psalms, chapter 56, verse 8, all of your tears are kept in a bottle by God. Every tear you have ever wept over a passing of a loved one or a hurt or a pain in your life, every, every ounce of weeping that have come out of your eyes, God has captured in a bottle. He's captured it. You are so precious to him that not even your tears fall to the ground. He loves you that much. When you have cried, God's cried. 
because his children are hurting. Many of you are parents and grandparents and such. And when you see your child weeping and crying because of pain and sorrow, your heart goes out to them. Your heavenly father is exactly the same. His heart goes out to you. Feeling the hurt you have felt. And when we look at some of our loved ones that have not made it to heaven, and there are some that will not, when we look at them, we worry and we stress. Why can't I reach them? Why can't I touch them? God send someone into their lives. But see, they have free will just like you have free will. They can choose to, they can choose not to. But every tear you have cried, God has captured because it's precious to him. Because you're precious to him. Verse 37, it says, but some of them said, could not he open the eyes, uh, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? No. He can't keep you from dying. He can't keep you from the spiritual death that you will suffer because you choose to suffer it. Does that make sense? He can't keep you from making the right choice. He can only provide all that is needed for you to make the right choice, but you have to make the choice. And when you make the choice, the right choice, his promise is you have eternity. Eternity with the Father, with him, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. You will never be turned away if you have truly meant it in your heart when you have called on Jesus. He has provided all that is necessary to overcome death. And we know the rest of the story of Lazarus. He raised him from the dead just as he can raise us up if we believe. Jesus expressed this in the first time he wept. Remember, this is the second time. The last time uh, was whenever he was in the garden. And now we're talking about Lazarus. That's the second time. And now we're going to go to the very first time he wept. Okay? Which is over in chapter 19 of Luke. It's in the other chapters or the other Gospels, but it's best in 19. Starting at uh, verse 28. Luke 19 and 28. Now you can read most of the story. This is, if you go over to 37, this is where he came into, near the place, where the road goes down to the, from the Mount of Olives. The whole crowd of disciples began joyfully Uh, to praise God in loud voices uh, for all the miracles they had seen. This is the same story that we just read over in John 12 about Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Remember that? We read that over in John. Peace in heaven and glory in, uh, in the highest. Hosanna. Salvation now. Bring us salvation now. Jesus coming now. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, even the stones will cry out. All of creation desires to be saved. Paul tells us over in the book of Romans that creation groans for salvation. Groans to be saved. What is creation? Creation is not you and I. We're the created. The creation is the world. It's the plants. It's the trees. It's the rocks. It's the mountains. It's the seas. It's all the other stuff. All of creation groans to be put back the way God originally planned it over in Genesis 1 when he made the Garden of Eden the perfect place for his created mankind, you and I. That's what God's Uh, purpose was. That's what God's plan was from the very, very beginning, is that we would live eternity with him in the Garden of Eden. 
We know the story of Adam. Adam, what were you thinking, brother? We know the story of Adam and the fall. And therefore, God cast out Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. And he put a guard, an angel, a cherubim there with a flaming sword so that no one may enter it again until God cleans this earth the final time. God's intent is for you and I to live forever and ever and ever in his presence. That is his plan. But just like Adam and Eve, you have to make the choice. You have to make the choice. Verse 39, uh, verse 40. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept. He wept. This is the third time that Christ wept. He wept over it and he said, if you underline that, if you will, in your Bible, if you don't have a problem writing in your Bible, if you, which simply means there's something you've got to do. If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. The time of God's coming to you is right now. Right now, today, this very moment, this is the time of God's coming to you. This is the time God is trying to touch your heart once again, to change your soul, to change your spirit, and you, for you to make the correct choice, which is to receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Now, right here in verse 42, it says, The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another. And he is talking about the city of Jerusalem. This is whenever he came in. He was on the, on the upper uh, part of the mountain going down into Jerusalem. Jew Jerusalem is low. And so he was going down into Jerusalem. And he looked over Jerusalem just like he would look over you. Just like he would look over this congregation today. And he would say, friends, don't you understand? Today is the day. But they would not. See, he was foretelling the future. He was foretelling what was going to happen, just like he knows your future. He knows who will. He knows who will not accept him, and he knows who will accept him. He looked at Jerusalem, and he said, you are going to be destroyed, totally destroyed. And on April the 9th of the 70 A.D., the year 70 A.D., on April the 9th, Rome surrounded Jerusalem, 100% surrounded Jerusalem, built embankments so that no one could get in, no one could get out. In September, in the middle of September of that same year of 70 A.D., Jerusalem surrendered to Rome. And Rome destroyed Jerusalem completely to the point to what n there was not one stone left on another. Killed thousands upon thousands upon thousands of the people of Jerusalem. Women, children, men, slaves, animals. Rome totally destroyed Jerusalem. Jesus predicted it about 40 years prior to it actually happening. Jesus knows when your day is coming, when, when your life is over, when your time is finished. He knows. Are you ready? You don't know, but he does know. And just like in Jerusalem, he said, if you had only known, if you had only seen. This past week, many of you know I write a devotional every, every day, every weekday, called Good Morning. And about a week or so ago, God put this very scripture on my heart. And I'm never going to try to rewrite scripture 
But I do always try to bring Scripture up to how it affects or how it applies to today. And this is what I wrote on that day. My good morning, was, again, was not rewriting Scripture or anything. It was simply, it says, if you had only known, verse 42, if you look at 42 here and then just kind of hear what I say, if you had only realized on any day, that's what I wrote. If you would only realize on any day that the Lord touches you, what would bring you peace in your life? But you would not open your eyes. The eyes of your heart, the eyes of your spirit. This is what God put on my heart that day. The message was, today is the day. God is urging you or trying to urge you to open your heart, open the eyes of your spirit, to see the truth. Jesus is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth. But we don't want to see the truth. See, Scripture even tells us that mankind fears the truth because his truth will be known. He fears the light, which Jesus is the light. Because the light will show the truth of the person. I pray today that you will let the light shine in your heart and show you the truth of Christ. Show you the truths of Christ. To show you the Word of God, which is the truth, that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. But you have to open up your heart. You have to open up your eyes. You have to be willing to see. But most of all, you have to be willing to accept. Jesus can heal the blind, those who cannot see the truth, through his message of the truth. The truth will be known if we listen. If we listen. Palm Sunday is a day to celebrate the coming of our salvation through God's saving grace and the sacrificed body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hosanna. 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 Save us now. Save us now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that Jesus has done, all that Jesus will do, and all the G that Jesus is doing today. Father, those who are watching on the internet, those who are here today, if they do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, I ask, Lord, that you touch that heart, that soul, that spirit today, that body today. Let them know that you are here for them. Through you and only through you, death has no power over us. Death has no power over us whatsoever as long as we have the resurrected Christ. As he raised Lazarus from the dead, he promises he too shall raise us from the dead. Not only the dead in spirit, but also the dead in body, if that time deems, if it deems necessary. If you do not want to suffer the eternal hell, the eternal lake of fire, the eternal separation from God, then you must go through Jesus Christ. There is no name above that name. There is no blood more precious than that blood. There is no man. That is any superior to him except for God himself. God the Father. If you do not know Jesus. I ask you to search your heart today. Today is the day of salvation 
if you accept it. It's very easy to do. It is quite difficult to live the Christian life because you're living in a fallen world. But you too spiritually can be raised from the dead for eternity by calling on Jesus' name and asking him to come into your life and be your Lord, but most of all, your Savior. Just simply in your heart, but you must mean it in your heart, just say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Help me walk through this world not as a fallen sinner, but as a sinner forgiven by grace, a child of the Most High God. Come into my life. Be my Savior. And I make you my Lord forever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Palm Sunday to you. Let's all stand for this song. If anybody needs prayer, uh, please come forward. Let us pray with you, pray for you. We'll be more than happy to. And then uh, we're going to go over and pray for George here in just a second. But anybody else, come forward and let us pray with you.
been to Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Inside the garments that are stained with sin And be washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb Well, are you washed, are you washed in the blood In the blood, in, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless, are they white are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away in the morning To a home of God's celestial shore I'll fly away Amen, amen.